Well, we got there, and everything is going crazy, and there's a lot of fighting, and so on and so on. And then, uh, our mission was, was to defend Saigon at that point. Uh, our brigade headquarters was there, and they were North Vietnamese were coming through. We killed a lot of those people. And uh, they used bulldozers and dumped them all in a mass grave and covered them up. There were just too many bodies there. And then uh, my company got sent a little further north to go after them, and we were up in War Zone D, which was probably... 95 kilometers north and uh, west of Saigon, and uh, we're a search and destroy operation looking for the bad guys. And we're moving through Triple Canopy Jungle in a diamond formation. I had the 4th platoon, I was a 1st lieutenant by then, I was with a company commander. 2nd <clears throat> platoon was on point, and the 1st uh, and 3rd were to the flanks in this heavy stuff. You couldn't see each other at all. And they walked right into a battalion sized ambush. Uh, they were in camouflage bunkers and killed some people right out with initial bursts. Make a long story short, nobody could move without being shot. We we're pinned down. We couldn't see them. We could see the machine guns, but we couldn't see exactly where they were coming from. They were about you know, 70 meters or so in front of us, somewhere in that mess. Company commander told me to grab some guys and see if I could low call around and get behind them. We did. We got behind it, and we could see the two bunkers. And the one on the left had a parapet, a parapet about like that and a pair of eyes looking at me. It was a female, I could tell that. I put a bullet right between her eyes and blew her face off. And unfortunately, that let them know we were behind them then. <clears throat> so the 51 caliber machine gun in the right-hand bunker uh, knew we were there, and they threw out a Chinese communist hand grenade, the kind with that big handle on it. It landed right between me and Sergeant Holder, who was maybe on the other side of that chair and blew up. The guy said it blew me off the ground about this high, and my body went like that. Uh, it broke my back, and I got uh, shrapnel in the right-hand side of me, and uh, we find out later that it it uh, uh, it ruptured the left in, inside of my left descending artery, you know, outside inside of the artery, the left inside ruptured. And uh, I, I thought I was dead when I saw it come out, and when I, when I was unconscious for a little while, Woke up, I truly inspected to see angels and exactly what I thought heaven looked like. And I realized there was a 51 caliber machine gun tearing the dirt up all around me. And I hollered back to JJ, a kid in my platoon, roll me a grenade. I didn't have one hanging on me for some dumb reason. He rolled me a grenade. <clears throat> I pulled the pin, let loose of the charging handle, and ran for the bunker and threw it in. And uh, it went off immediately and killed three in that bunker. I rolled over and emptied my M16 into the, into the other one killed them, and that let the, the unit move, and we, we, we got them. They had a whole underground hospital, everything under the damn ground down there, and they, they chewed out of there, and, uh, but we got a bunch of them. And so then <clears throat> the job was to get our dead and wounded <clears throat> out of there. Of which you were one. Yeah, but I didn't realize I was hurt that bad. I mean, I had, had some blood over here and all that. I didn't know that had ruptured, and I didn't know it broke my back. And all I was caring about was my men. we we got to get them out of here. And... So we had to go about five, I don't know, five, six, seven hundred yards to get to a clearing on the map that was enough that we could we could wrap debt cord around the trees and blow the LZ so the helicopters could get in. Loaded them up and uh, got them out. I stayed. I wasn't leaving my men. And and the medic took care of my foot and the side of my leg. And and we uh, we went on and bivouac that night. And they flew me in a new boot and new pants and. And uh, my back hurt, but I didn't know what was wrong. And <clears throat> this one, we didn't find out about this until about eight or nine, ten years ago when they finally cathed me at the VA and saw what had happened. And, and the, what they call it was it spontaneously healed itself. And only the second guy they've ever knew. So they did a, our university, Barbie Hospital in Albuquerque, is a teaching hospital for, for UNM, University of Mexico. So they used that to teach uh, cardiac students coming through. They're the residents that... Of, hey, if you see this kind of an EKG, don't assume that you had a heart attack. It could be this. And they did a big thing on it, and they teach with that. So I had to think I was just God working in my life there to, to say, hey, it in your time. And then I eventually had to have that toe cut off because it got infected and all that stuff. But that was a little later. <clears throat>